In this video, I want to talk about calculating work done by a single force. And I'm going to restrict myself to the special case of one-dimensional motion and a constant force. So if I have one-dimensional motion, it means I'm, what I mean by that in this case is I'm going as a straight line between two points, some initial position and some final position. Given that it's in a straight line, I can then establish my coordinate system along that line. Let's call it delta x. And then I can, I can calculate, given that it's now, say, plus x, in the, um, along the x-axis is what I meant, I can then calculate the displacement vector delta x as the as the vector that points from the initial position to the final position along the straight line path that the object moves. Okay, so if there is a constant force acting on this object during that time, and it can be going in any direction, so we can have the force, say, go off in this direction, but it's constant, then the net work done on that object by this force is equal to that force dotted with the displacement vector. Okay, so let's see how that works. Before, we learned the general form of work. The work is then the integral from initial position to final position of this uh, infinite series of infinitesimal uh, uh, quantities, which is the force dotted into this infinitesimal displacement vector as you move in very, very small steps along the path. So let's look at that in this, in this set. Let me draw my, my line back here. So if I go from initial position to final position, and I blow up sort of this uh, infinitesimal step that's along the line, since it's straight, I know that the infinitesimal line vector then points along the line, the infinitesimal step vector points along the line from the initial position to the final position. Okay, so this is that infinitesimal step. If the, then there, there's a force that's acting on the object during this step and, and it's off, say, we say in, in that direction, and so we can calculate for this very small step the work done um, during this very small step. So since it's a since a very small amount of work, I'll call it you know dW for this very small amount of work, and that's equal to then the magnitude of the force times cosine of the angle between the force and the infinitesimal step times the infinitesimal step. And so this is, you know, step one for this small amount of work. Okay, so if we go to the next step, and I'm, okay, the next step, which I'm, well, I can't really, let's put my next step over here. I blow it up, okay. It also has a very small uh, displacement vector pointing in exactly the same direction. And so this is, the first one was one, this one is two we can calculate the small amount of work done, which is then the dot product between the force and this small displacement. Now, the key is we're assuming a constant force. So the force during the second step is exactly the same as the force during the first step, which means the magnitude of the force is the same and cosine of theta is the same. Sorry, this is the second step. The cosine of the angle is the same. Because we're going in a straight line, the vector ds does not change for each step. And 
because the force we said is constant, it does not change for each step. That means the angle does not change for each step. And so for each step that it goes along, the magnitude of the force is the same, cosine of the theta is the same, and we get um, this for, for, you get another term that looks exactly like this for each step. All right, so if we sum all of these up, the total work then is the sum of all of these terms. So it's F cosine theta ds1 plus F cosine theta ds2 plus dot dot dot. Since these are the same, I can factor all of those out and I get F cosine theta, then the sum of all of these steps. Well, the sum of all of those steps is just the total distance. F cosine theta, the total distance. And that total distance then is the magnitude of the displacement vector for a straight line, which we've assumed. So this is equal to F delta x, the magnitude of the displacement vector, cosine theta, where theta is also the angle between the force and the displacement vector. I ran out of space, so just let me put this again. So here I have this line from x1 to x2. It's along the x-axis. And so if this is delta x and this is the force, I give this that, then that angle between the dis displacement vector and the force was the same angle between our infinitesimal steps and our force along every step of the way. And so in the end, we're adding up all these little bits and pieces that turn up to be the, the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of the displacement vector times the angle between them. And that then can be rewritten as what we had before. Work is equal to the force dotted the displacement vector, and which is a convenient, much more convenient than doing line integrals. But remember, this is only for um, straight line motion. Straight line motion under constant force. Okay, and so an even simpler special case is when the force is in the same direction as the motion. So let's say I'm moving this box from x initial to x final and my force is also along the x-axis. And a lot of books do this in you know, the first thing that they do uh, but this is just sort of a trivial special case of the straight line motion with constant force. In this case, the angle between delta x, so let's get delta x as the vector that points from initial to my final position in a straight line. The angle between the uh, force and delta x is just zero, so work is equal to the force times delta x. Now, the other, it's important to note that that's the case for parallel. If we have anti-parallel, so let's call this force 1, and so the work done by uh, force 1 was uh, F1 times delta X. But let's say there was a second force in this direction, we'll call force 2, and still the box moved from x1, x initial here, to x final. We can also calculate then the work 
due to force 2, which is negative the magnitude of force 2 times the displacement. Because in this case, the, uh, the applied force is anti-parallel to the displacement vector, and so the work is equal to negative the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of the displacement vector. And so I don't necessarily recommend thinking of this as a, as a different situation, the, the purely one-dimensional motion, because to be honest, then you get sort of a proliferation of equations and it's hard to keep uh, track of everything. I, I think the, the important sort of special case to remember is straight line motion constant force. If you have straight line motion and a constant force, then you have a, a very simple relationship to find the work for that force. And then if the forces happen to be parallel or anti-parallel to the motion, then uh, you can calculate the dot product becomes very, very simple. And so that's uh, an easy way to, and then it's certainly easier to remember this expression than to try to do the line integral in, in these special cases. I, I will point out that if you call, say, the, the total distance that the, the system went, say, d, then in, in the very, very, very special case where the force is perfectly parallel and constant to the straight line motion, you get the work on the object is equal to the force times the distance. Now this is the sort of thing that a lot of people see in their first introductory course and it never really goes beyond that. And so that's not really a great thing to remember because that only happens when you have the force parallel to the displacement and it's constant and going straight line motion. And so in general for straight line motion with a constant force, it's better to remember this expression. It's more applicable to those situations.